Hello, everyone, and welcome to. This is Europe, and here's Luxembourg. Now let's go, shall we? The land upon which the modern state of Luxembourg lies has been inhabited for eons, but very little is known about its early population. Around the mid fifth century BC, the region fell to the Celtic tribe known as the Treveri. Archaeologists have uncovered what was likely their capital in southern Luxembourg, a site that reveals a prosperous civilization enriched by mining and trading metals. In 53 BC, Luxembourg was conquered by the Romans under Julius Caesar, and a mostly uninterrupted period of peace followed for over 400 years. As the Western Roman Empire withered and decayed, the land of Luxembourg was scooped up by the Germanic Franks, to which the people said, Franks a lot. And the Franks indeed did a lot. Their Germanizing influence has lasted to this day. The modern Luxembourgish language descends from a Frankish German dialect. Also significant was the introduction of Christianity, which spread in the locality thanks to the missionary exertions of the Anglo-Saxon St. Willibrod in the 700s. So the years trotted by, and Luxembourg's leaders included men like Charlemagne, Louis the Pious, and Charles the Fat. In 963, the land had its official foundation as a state when Count Siegfried acquired a piece of it, from which foothold would eventually spring Luxembourg's capital, called Luxembourg. Easy enough to remember. Its fortress, over time, was enlarged and strengthened into one of the most formidable in Europe. Luxembourg, it should be noted, was a part of the multifaceted German-run Holy Roman Empire. It grew in wealth, and its royal house even supplied several emperors. Charles here elevated the county into a duchy, meaning Luxembourg Burgish leaders got the promotion from counts to dukes. The country came under new management after its acquisition by the powerful House of Habsburg, and in 1556 it became part of their province of Spanish Netherlands, having previously fended off two French invasions. In the 1600s, after Spain and France had a war, Luxembourg suffered the first of its partitions, losing these bits of land to France. French King Louis XIV actually conquered it all, but gave it back in 1697. After the War of the Spanish Succession, Luxembourg switched over to the Austrian Habsburgs, and in 17 1995, during the French Revolution, the country fell to France again, and French mistreatment of the people enkindled a rebellion, which was promptly crushed, and Luxembourg only regained its independence after Napoleon's defeat. At the Congress of Vienna, Luxembourg's leaders were promoted again, this time from dukes to grand dukes, but Prussia carved this slice out of the country for itself. Thus, Luxembourg's leaders were now more important with less land. When Belgium became an independent nation in the 1830s, it claimed Luxembourg. It didn't get it, but it got more than half half of Luxembourg's territory in the 1839 Treaty of London. As the 19th century progressed, the shrunken nation modernized and declared itself neutral, a status recognized and respected during the Franco-Prussian War, but ignored during World War I, when Germany invaded. Much more ruinous was World War II, where the Germans invaded again, thus hurling the region into the conflict's crossfire, and it suffered much loss as a result. After the war, Luxembourg became a founding member of the UN, NATO, and the EU. In the late 20th century, the country's economy shifted from from steel to finance, becoming a major banking center. Luxembourg today is one of the very richest nations in the world, with an advanced economy, a very high level of human development, and high quality of life. So that's it for Luxembourg, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye!